Welcome to the Etsy Conversations podcast, featuring inspiring interviews with Etsy shop owners, hosted by Ijama Elazu. Hi, and welcome to this week's episode of the Etsy Conversations podcast. I'm your host, Ijama, and I thank you for joining me for another episode of the show. And this week, my guest is Tara Jacobson. Tara is multi-talented. We met, in quotes, on Twitter. And after I Twitter stalked her for a little bit, I was like, okay, I need to have her on. She's been a marketer for 15 years, more than 15 years um, at marketingartfully.com. And she runs an Etsy shop, Paperly People. Tara, thank you for being my guest and welcome. Oh, I'm so excited to be here. I've stalked you too. I've listened to all your episodes. <laughs> okay, good. You know, I, I like to think sometimes that online stalking to some degree is okay if you, you know, reveal well, yourself at some point. <laughs> exactly. If you're if you're showing up at their house, then that might be a problem. But yeah. in general, like I just share people's stuff and things like that. So hopefully they appreciate it rather than get all creeped out about it. Yeah. So, um, so thank you again for taking the time to talk to me. One of the reasons I wanted to have Tara on the podcast was because, um, you've been marketing for a while and I've looked at what you've done in the marketing world and, and you've accomplished a lot. And I just thought that having the marketing background you have and selling on Etsy that you would have a, a lot that we could learn from you. And so I am really excited to learn from you and just hear how you are parlaying your marketing experience into Etsy and, and see what we can learn from you. But before we start, can you just tell us a little bit about yourself? So, yes, I have been in marketing. I actually started on the internet in 1999. I worked at a hosting company. And then in 2001, I opened a company, a marketing company. It was called Something Different. Um, than what Marketing Art Flea is, because I took off two years in the middle to be a realtor, which was just horrible. Those people are so emotional, and marketing is so <laughs> nice compared to that. And then uh, about two, well, we're in two years and two months now, my husband and I um, adopted three children. Mm -hmm. So my life went from super, super easy dinks to, oh my gosh, they're everywhere. <laughs> This week, I you were. It's funny we were talking beforehand, and you said how you manage your kids in your business. Mm -hmm. And this week, I realized my kids had fifteen things to do, wow. and so this week I managed it by almost having a nervous breakdown. <laughs> <laughs> That's one way to do it. There you go. <laughs> oh wow! So so your hands are full, but um, you're running. So can we call it two full time businesses or more? Well, I would think it's two full-time businesses because I, I, the way I look at it is I do have clients that, that I have um, three ladies who work for me and we uh, do social media and blogging for them. So that those are my clients that pay the bills, right? They're my, um, my bread and butter. Okay. And I love them. All of them have been clients for quite a while now. And so like today, I'm spending probably two or three hours to work on their postings for the coming month. Oh. So yes, there is that. But I do have help because um, like my assistant is amazing. She's a woman that has worked with me for almost five years now. Hmm. And she does all the hard work. Like she collects payments and she, um, you know, talks to the clients if they need to be and things like that. But I think that the reason I started the Etsy store in part was because I realized I had to have a way to be more hands-off to be able to sell things because I sell a digital product. Mm -hmm. So I had to have a way to sell things without me having to do the work. Oh, right. So you create you create something once and just sell it multiple times. Right. And then the okay. very super fun part of it is, is finding out how to market it, mm -hmm. how to get, you know, dis distribution and people to be able to see that. Tara, you know, you're one of the few people who thinks that's the fun part of <laughs> of selling anything in market, especially creative people. Most of us don't think well, that's a fun part. 
I would, I, I hope after you're done with, after we're done today, that they will see that some of it is super fun. And, and the, the marketing part can be really creative because I'm a graphic artist. I like pictures. I like, you know, making everything pretty and, and yeah. doing all that. And so that to me is, is part of how I express my creativity is through creating really neat marketing pieces that I think people that will respond to. So one of the questions I have is just, so you have an assistant that you've had for five years. I know when, as, as business owners, as we begin to grow, especially when we start something by ourselves, it's hard for us to let certain aspects go. How did you know when one, when the right time to get help was, and two, how did you go about finding the right type of help? Well, I, I was very fortunate. She was a referral from one of my customers. I believe she's his sister-in-law. Um, so when I figured it out was when I wasn't getting paid because I'm not willing to pick up the phone and call anybody Hmm. and ask them for the money they owe me. So That became a real challenge in my business. And what you want to do as a business owner, and even because she's not full time, she, I think a lot of weeks she winds up working full time hours. Um, but, but I don't need somebody to pay 80, you know, 80 hours a week or something like that. And so a lot of times price seems like a consideration for that. So I think Mm -hmm. that you can be very, respectful of their time, but also provide a steady income for them, which is something that she really appreciates. And then you need to find somebody that has complementary skills to you. I think we tend to like people or want to work with people who are similar to us. So, you know, to find somebody creative, I could bounce ideas off of would be awesome. But but then you have two of you instead of somebody who's really, she's super um, detailed and she's super able to check and make sure, you know, did this bill come in? Did that, did that come in? She does all the scheduling. So I do, um, interviews and things like that on the internet. Mm -hmm. And so, and I, and I do consultations with people in coaching. And so she does all of that. And every once in a while, I will still, somebody will sneak in and they're like, well, can I schedule with you? And then we start this thing back and forth of, you know, uh, did, 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 are you available on Tuesday? No, I'm not available on Tuesday. And I hate that. And she likes it. So find somebody who's complimentary. Okay. And for most sellers, because we start off, you know, just a, a one person, a one person show, do you think it's worth the investment? Maybe not in the very beginning, but once money starts coming in to start to get things off our plates, or should we wait till our our Etsy business is is profitable like in the wait not the red in the black before we start spending money on on outsourced help well for me it was because we started a lot smaller than she is now I got you know get a couple of hours a week okay take take just a few dollars and you know and and at that point that's that's Starbucks money right that's not you know, and, and just the other thing I like about starting small that way is she and I have an excellent relationship, but you don't know that that's going to happen when you start with somebody. So if you hire somebody for a couple hours a week and you have to fire them, you're not going to feel as badly as if you offered somebody a full-time job and now they have to be let go. Yeah, that's true. Okay. All right. So let's talk about Etsy first, your, your Etsy shop. Why did you pick Etsy of everywhere online that you could sell, including having your own e-commerce website? So, so I, you always ask if we've known about Etsy. I've known about (laughs) Etsy for a long time. I buy personal things. I don't have another shop, but I have a personal account that I use to buy personal things. And I was looking and I would say probably... Six months to nine months ago, I started noticing people were selling digital products on Etsy. I'm sure it was longer than that ago, but but I just noticed because I use the fancy planner. So I started to see the ladies were selling the printables, and I thought, oh, that's nice. That's very, very, you know, 
personal oriented. Mm -hmm. And then I started to notice that people were selling um, planners for your business, which is what I sell. I, mm -hmm. I do all business related things. So I don't sell anything about how to get enough water or anything like that. But mine is all how to time manage your business, how to do SEO, how to do all those kinds of things. Okay. And so when I saw that that was happening there, I figured out that I could sell much lower cost products on Etsy than I could on my website. So my big marketing package on my website is $200. And to to do that kind of 350 350 350 thing on my website would take a lot of administrative time. Hmm. Um but to but to do it on Etsy, I mean they they take care of everything. So it was just brilliant for me. I thought it was amazing. So what you sell on Etsy are like are basically components of a bigger package that you you offer clients through your marketing website. Yeah, that's kind of what it is. Like I would I don't know that there's a okay, I'll tell you an, a great example. So okay. I have a how to do Etsy SEO. Right, I see that. Right? Uh -huh. The worksheet, um, the SEO worksheet for Etsy sellers. Exactly. So okay. that that you know, an, an, an Etsy seller that's trying to learn SEO isn't going to want to pay for a $97 course or anything like that. They're going to really want to know just how to do one thing really well. Hmm. And so it's a PDF. It's a, um, I record a video on how to do the sheet. And then there's a walkthrough that is actually on my blog publicly. So What's happening is I'm getting content for my website because I'm writing a big, long blog post. I'm getting income from that form, yeah. you know, in very small increments, 350 or two bucks or one buck. Mm -hmm. And then I'm also increasing not only the reach on Etsy, but my reach on the internet. And so for me, I didn't see that there was a way that there was a downside to this. Wow. Okay. And I'm looking at that. And so when someone purchases any of your downloadable products, they also have access to a video walkthrough showing them exactly step by step how to use what they've just bought from you? I would say on 90% of them. There may be one or two that don't have that, but then they wouldn't say it in the description. Okay. So let's talk about your goals and what the intent was when you opened this shop. Was it to, well, actually, let me not guess. What was the main goal for opening Paperly People? To make money. Okay, That's, I love it. <laughs> right? Yes. Um, I think that there's a segment of the population that isn't looking on Google specifically for how to do something, who's maybe not watching webinars, but who are actually small business owners and mm -hmm. they're on Etsy anyways because they're buying, you know, cute business card designs or whatever. And and they they can find me here. I mean, I think it's a totally different market than a lot of my stuff. I do a lot of work with realtors and authors mm -hmm. and th they aren't necessarily on Etsy in mass. And the people on Etsy in mass are not necessarily on Amazon in mass. So it's a yeah. it's a wonderful additional marketing channel. Okay. Now, do you remember when you got your first sale? The day I opened my shop? No way. Really? It was my bestie. Oh, okay. I was like, great. One of those, it never happens to anyone else type of stories. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was my bestie. And, um, and, and, but I will tell you that, that, if you're opening a shop or you're brand new or you haven't made a sale yet, just beg. Beg a human being that you know to buy. Because even though you know it was on your it was your bestie or it was, you know, your dad or whoever, I just made like the little fists in the air thing because <laughs> even though it wasn't quote air quotes real, it gave me that that feeling. And then I will tell mm -hmm. you, I'm actually documenting this on paperlypeople.com where I have, I'm on week 10. So I'll tell you, I'm actually on week 11 because I do it backwards. But I, but I wrote down like the first day somebody that I didn't know bought. And, um, and then one day, like two weeks ago, somebody bought like four things and I'm mm. like, wow, 
this is awesome. So, so there's a, a, I'm big on psychology because that's my bachelor's degree, but there's a chemical response that happens in your brain when you get happy. Yeah. And so if having sales on your Etsy shop will make you happy, just beg anybody that you know to buy something. <laughs> Yeah, I know. I know that happy feeling. So, okay, other than your bestie, when did you get your first stranger sale, for lack of a better term? Okay. Um, I would say I would say maybe two weeks in. Okay. Because I had a bunch of sales. Because I have a marketing company and I have a big website, I get about um, 20,000 uh, views per month on my website. Okay. And so I have a mailing list. So I do get sales from people who already knew me, liked me and trusted me. Okay. And now they're just finding something special that they're buying on there. Okay. But I did, when I was thinking about what to talk to you about, I wanted to talk about this a little bit and using what you have already to help sell on Etsy. So for me, it was, I have a big internet presence and I have social media. Right. But for you, it might be that you know every one of the soccer moms, you know, you know their kids' birthdays and mm. and you have all these connections. Then go to those ladies and say, hey, I could really use some help. Or if you're a networking genius and you go to networking all the time, then use whichever of your talents are going to to help you get those for sales. What if you're more of a reserved type of person and you're not really good at asking people for things and you don't have a mailing list. So so say in person, you're reserved and online, you don't have that big of a presence. What's the next, what, what's the next, well, what's the word I'm looking for? Like what other tactic could that type of person use? So there's in, in marketing, and I can't remember which book it's in. I think it's a Malcolm Gladwell book. But they talk about um, mavens and connectors and normal people. <laughs> so that sounds like those are normal people, right? They're not extroverted. They're not. Um, they're not excited about you know selling their stuff. What you need to then do is you really need to find some people um, that would be willing to sell for you consignment or that are willing to support you. So, and I know this happens a lot. So say there's a lady at church that knows everybody, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. She's that lady. Well, talk to her, take her out for coffee and say, I just opened up a store. This is super important to me. It's going to help support my family or it supports my creativity or whatever it does for you. And then ask her if she will help. Okay. And you would be surprised. Those types of people are crazy. Like they <laughs> love helping other people. And then in that case, what I would do is I would go on Vistaprint and buy 500 business cards for, you know, 10 bucks yeah. and give her, give them to her and say, here's my business cards. If you know anybody who needs a, you know, a stuffed armadillo, please make sure <laughs> that I give them a card. And I guarantee she will get you some sales. Okay. So the bottom line is, if you have a business, you have to at least tell somebody about it. You can't just set it up and keep quiet about it, even if it means getting someone else who will be your cheerleader. But you have to talk about it somehow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The, the, I was doing, I did a post, um, a guest post on a different blog today. And, and I was doing a search and for one of my keywords, there are 60 billion results. So business calendar, there's 60 B with a billion results on Google and there's like 125,000 results on Etsy. Okay. Hmm. There, there's too much out there for you to just, you know, to be passive and to wait for people to come. You may be able to build a shop that way. And I'm sure that there are people that have, um, I would get good at SEO, right? Like then right. you don't have to talk to anybody. Just, just make right. sure your stuff shows up and, and you don't have to talk to any humans. And that would, that's kind of how I do it. <laughs> okay. Now, what do you think, what are the main mistakes that you see Etsy sellers making when it comes to 
marketing our Etsy businesses? Well, I don't think it's exclusive to Etsy people. I think that um, small business owners in general do not have a rule book. And so you wake up one morning and you think, oh, I'm going to do X. So the very first thing I I know that people are missing is who is going to buy your product. So Mm -hmm. I know very clearly, some people call it an avatar. I call it a perfect customer. Um, But I know for sure my lady is between 45 and 65. She owns her own business. She has a college degree and she makes over between 80 and a hundred thousand dollars a year. And usually she's some in some sort of, of profession or creative profession. So she's like a financial advisor, a realtor, or she's a artist or speaker. So I know who she is. That's, that's exactly who I'm selling to. And because I do consulting with small business startups, they'll say, I'll say, well, who are you selling to? And they'll tell me in all sincerity that anybody could buy this. Yeah. <laughs> And and really, if you're selling to everybody, then nobody cares. It's yeah. just going to be too bland. So I have a number of different niches. I'm not sad if somebody says, oh, I really like to sell to horseback riders and pickle makers. I'm okay with that as long as they are willing to do twice as much work. Because, you know, I, for my realtor stuff, I have to have a whole group of marketing for them. And then I have to have a whole nother group of marketing for Etsy people and then a whole nother group of marketing for authors. So it's quite an extensive amount of marketing you have to do. So if you don't already like marketing, have one niche. (laughs) Okay. And I think you're talking to me, not directly, but (laughs) I, I, you are talking to me. That's just bottom line. So I've heard that before. Now, the question I have when it comes to knowing your perfect customer or finding your avatar, like um, some some other people call it, is do you need to know who that person is before you start or can you figure it out along the way? Okay, so if I was going to be selling high-end cowboy hats to um, anybody, I would start with a woman because I am a woman and that just makes everything easier. If I was a man, I would try to sell to men. The other thing you want to consider is that women make 80% of the buying decisions in any home, unless you're selling to just single men and then they make their own supposedly. (laughs) Usually it's their mom. Uh Um, Yeah. But, um, and then what you want to do is you want to figure out what they do. So people that like cowboy hats go to rodeos and they go to um, equestrian jumping events and they like cowboy shirts and they like cowboy boots. And what you want to do is you can go on Facebook and you can start to get some data about people who like, you know, Cowboys and Indians magazine and start to work your way back and really try to figure out what that person's going to be. In fact, I have a lady in mind. Her name is Susie Blackwell, Blackman, and she's a um, a cowboy lady. She does all kinds of stuff with uh, horses. And so I would find a couple of those ladies and start stalking them and see what they promote. And, and that's all you have to do. And then you just kind of, I have a, I have a worksheet that I haven't published that I just use in my business that I just, I want to know what, you know, who their heroes are. So Mm -hmm. for me, it's really sad that women our age is, is that they only have like Oprah Winfrey and maybe Condoleezza Rice and, and maybe, uh, you know, Sandra Bullock or things like that. But for men, there's an awful lot of really neat old, you know, war dudes that they love. If you're, if you're looking at marketing to a man over 50, they love Dwight D. Eisenhower and John Wayne. And, and if they're Republicans, primarily, they love Ronald Reagan quotes and things like that. And once you start to know who they like, then you can really start to see that, um, you know, how you would share your stuff and how you would maybe stylize it for sale and the words that you would use into your description. And it just carries through to everything. Okay. Yeah, I think that that has been, and and I'll speak for myself, um, but I think, I think a lot of Etsy sellers, when we first start, we, we create what we like, which works great for some people, 
But when you're creating something for someone that you're not really sure of, but you're hoping someone will like it, I think that's where we run into trouble. I know that's where I've run into trouble. I created things and I think somebody should like it, but then maybe not. So Right. Well, but that's the huge problem. If you're thinking that there has to be somebody out there that will like this, then the, then you're selling to everybody, right? You're right. thinking, oh, well, there's going to be that. So I'll give you an example. Paperly People is made for chicks. Like the colors are fluorescent pink and, and chartreuse. And if, if, because Etsy is full of women, right? Yeah. And so there's no point in me making products more masculine just to make the couple of guys, but I have all kinds of guys that have bought my stuff. They're just, you know, comfortable in their sexuality enough to not care that their form is pink. So that's something that you can do visually for all you creative people. You can start to try to figure out what your person would like. So cowboy people like brown. Their boots are brown and and they also like red. I see they have a lot of red stuff. So you mm. would, and black. So you would really want to have your branding and your things like that be, hmm. you know, old ropes and to be cowboy boots and things like that so that you could start to, they could just look at you and look at your products and look at what you're offering in your store and right away know that they're home, that they're going to be comfortable there. What are some resources that you would recommend for finding, for finding how to make your brand attractive to your to your perfect customer because like let's take your rodeo example i i wouldn't know that red and black were colors that appealed to a rodeo person so where would you advise someone to go to start learning about how their perfect customer thinks and what will appeal to them i would go to to big money Okay. So if I am, I would go to who, who are those boots? So there's all kinds of boot stores that sell the, the, you know, the clod hopper boots and they're very expensive. And I would start looking for, so for me to start selling productivity forms, I went to the people that are in my industry that are the biggest names. So I stalked David Allen, who does, who wrote Getting Things Done, and I kind of look and see what they what they have. I also really am a branding person, so I guess this one's way harder for me to answer because I just sort of know how to do it. Yeah. But I think when you start following those people that are in your industry, that are in the industry or those people, you're going to start to notice some themes right away. It's pretty obvious. It'll sort of smack you in the face. Okay. All right. So now let's talk about time management. How do you do it? Um, Because like a lot of people who run an Etsy business, most have something else going on. Either they're working and they're trying to build the Etsy business up on the side or they're raising kids um, actively in the home while trying to build their Etsy business. And for you, you're, you, you have another business and kids and, and growing your Etsy business. How do you manage your time and what tips do you have for us? So time management is kind of my thing. So I have sheets for it and I'm, I, I, abuse other people, all my friends into managing their time. So it's awesome. <laughs> um, so the very first thing I do is I have a, a worksheet that I use every single day in my business. And it's super important to me. And I should have had it out because I was sure you're going to ask about managing time. Is that also so the me... one you sell color coding your perfect week for the night? Hour? Well, that's, that's your week. But the, the one that I do is the daily planner. Okay. And and what it has is, first off, I have specific things I want to do every day. So I want to post a new form on Etsy, which I don't get to every day, but I wish I did. I want to write a blog post. I have to get my stock photography. I need to make a picture. I need. I even put down check my email because I don't look at my email until after I've spent an hour writing every morning. Hmm. Then 
I need to know what my appointments are. And I don't have tons of appointments. Um, so that's helpful. And then every day I write down my affirmations. So one of my affirmations is to make $10,000 a month selling digital products. And one of my affirmations is I have plenty of time for kids and crafts. And another one is I get 50,000 web hits. And so every morning I write down my top 10 affirmations. And the reason why I do that is it's amazing how many people I work with who tell me that their biggest goal is to be a speaker. And I'll say, oh, that's awesome. So what have you done <laughs> to make that a, a, a possibility? And a lot of times they'll say, well, I haven't done anything. Well, if these are your affirmations and this is what you want your life to be, then you have to do something every day on at least some of them mm -hmm. or, or nothing will happen. And then I have my um, tasks. So I have a list of tasks and I can't have more than a certain amount because there's only so much room. And if there's more than that amount, I know I'm not going to get them done. Um, and I use sort of a bullet journal kind of thing where I, I fill in the blanks, I fill in the little squares and then I move them over. Um, and then the, the one thing I guess that I feel like is the most important thing is my mastermind partner uh, years ago told me that you should write down everything you do for a week. And I was going to cry when, when she said that because she really wants you to write down every single thing you do. And then figure like out... Like from waking up? During work. No, from, from the moment you wake up to when you go to sleep, write everything down. More so during your work time. Oh, oh okay, okay. So, and then you have to say whether it was a happy face, a sad face, or a, or a straight face. Hmm. And so what happened was, and this is so funny to me to, for self-employed people, and I did it myself, right? So as you go through like everything you do just because you do it, if it's a sad face, stop it. Either get some help, or if it's not something that's vital to your business, then stop doing it. Hmm. And so... I've gotten really good at making sure, so so when somebody asks me what I do, I honestly say I'm a writer because that is the, that's the most important thing I do. I write books and I write blog posts and sometimes I write sales copy, which isn't my favorite, but I don't mind doing it. And I write all kinds of stuff. So my first, and I get up at four o'clock in the morning, so that helps, uh -huh. but um my first hour of every day when everybody's asleep is for writing only. And I write for an hour. And then everything else that has to happen in my day has to come after that. There's just no other way around it. So you can't have a marketing emergency. You can't, you know, tell me that there's something that's so important that after I have my shower that at five o'clock in the morning I have to work on it. I have to write because that's what's important to me. Mm -hmm. And then I calendar everything. I think a lot of people feel like, especially self-employed people, feel like they, you know, that that the promise was that if you are your own boss, you get to have all the time in the world, you get to do whatever you want. And I find that the more rigidly my time is scheduled, so I'll give you the perfect example. I tend to go, I'm talking to you today, but I tend to go to lunch on Fridays with friends. And so from 12 or 1 o'clock until I have to go pick up my kids at the bus stop, I just go to lunch. And for most people, that would be work time, and they would feel like they were playing hooky or doing something like that. But because right. all my other time is so rigidly scheduled, I can be happy as a little clam having, you know, Indian <laughs> food on Friday yeah. just because I know that's exactly what I'm supposed to be doing at that time anyways. Okay. And that makes perfect sense, actually. And and I think I I agree with you because I know when I write stuff down to cross out and I I think I'm easy on myself where I give myself an out like oh well I'm too tired to do this and I shift it down or I shift things around but it makes sense that if you if you schedule everything stuff should fit. Well, that's, that's a big part of it is if, if you're trying to fit, you know, 50 pounds of work into a 10 pound bucket, it's just not going to fit. Mm. There's, there's, you have to, you have to figure out priorities. And for me, 
I think that that when I decided to open my Etsy shop, my choice at that time was to get more um, clients that I was doing work for or to build my long-term business where I, I kind of built up a digital products business that I could sell, um, you know, the pro the internet promise while you sleep. Yeah. But it's very true. There, I couldn't do both. I couldn't get more, you know, regular clients and build up my digital business. It was, it was either or. So then, then you, you have to make a choice. And, and I was going to ask you this because I think you're, there's a book that has a name for it. And I was trying to think of it earlier and I kept, it it would, didn't come to mind, but there are some people who have multiple interests and instead of just doing one thing, they're happier when they're doing different things. And those interests could be completely different. Like say for you, you write, you're a marketer and you're selling on Etsy, which ties into your marketing as well. But there's a word for people who who like doing multiple things at a time. And for those people, I think the struggle is well, how do I divide up my time? And and one thing I like that you said was you pick what's most important. And for you, it's the writing. So that's the first thing you do every day. Um, but for someone who feels like, well, I have so many interests and, and things that make me happy doing, doing them, how do I narrow down or cut out what's not essential? Well, I think that that, that you know, happy, sad face, straight face helps because I think that sometimes, so I'll give you an example. I love doing art. Um, I love watching art videos. I was watching a Diane Reevely video about squirting paint on a journal and, and I have a really cute carousel of all kinds of art stuff. And, and every once in a while I think, oh, I should start making art to sell. <laughs> well, <laughs> God bless it. I mean, that just, and, and, and I can even think that a lot, but it would then take a hobby and make a business. Yeah. And sometimes that does work, but for me, it doesn't work. And I know that Marie Forleo, F-O-R-L-E-O, -E talks about it as a multi-passionate entrepreneur. <sighs> I think that's the word I was looking for. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I think that, that. There's a limit to it, right? So yeah. I kind of like, I like marketing a lot and writing goes along with it. And so my husband even said, he said, oh, you're opening an Etsy store, huh? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, yeah. <laughs> um, but it all kind of goes together and it's all part of, it's just a different way to sell what I already do. I think if you do decide to have two different, two completely different things, that's fine. You can manage them. You just have to schedule them. I tend to time block a lot. So Monday is client Monday. It's blog Monday. I do all their blogs. If I have extra work to do for them, mm -hmm. I'll do it then. I also work for them between noon and 2.45 when I have to get my kids. Um, I never work for for them in the morning when, when it's my writing time, right. my special time. Um, so I think that you can do that. If you have seven or eight, you're not going to be effective at any of them. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> you do not have seven or eight, do you? <laughs> Tara, I, I'm all over the place. I'll just be honest. I am so all over the place. I need to be real. I need to be reined in like a, like I'm in a rodeo. I need that your there rodeo you friend to rein me in. <laughs> well, I think the other thing that, that entrepreneurs can do is talk to somebody like me because a lot of times I can put an umbrella over stuff. And I talk to my people about this in that to you, they all feel very disparate and ha like they're not kind of, you know, there's Co no cohesion that goes yeah. through them. Mm -hmm. But a lot of times what you, what somebody else looking outside in can do is go, oh, your podcast and this and this all look alike and these and this look alike. And so then you do wind up with two things and then you're able to schedule it better. You may still have to, you know, let, let a couple things go, but a lot of times. Like the basket weaving. 
<laughs> the basket weaving has to go, and the bowling is done. <laughs> um, but yeah, so so I know that a lot of entrepreneurs struggle with that. That that you know, it really would be great if we had time to do everything, but none of us do. Yeah. Okay, let's talk about shop promotion. Um, so how let's start with how you promote your Etsy shop. So we know SEO is huge. Um, that was the number one thing you did to start getting traffic in. Do you do any other type of promotion for your Etsy shop other than just making sure your SEO your SEO is tight? Oh, honey. Okay. <laughs> so I promote it on Etsy. I also do the promoted listings oh, okay. and I have sold one item through the promoted listings. And as of the other day, I was behind. I was about 40 cents behind. But I don't know that there's like, I just have to sell another one <laughs> to be ahead. It's not like I'm spending a ton of money. I think they'll only let you spend a dollar a day. So I thought that was excellent. And then I heard somebody on your podcast said that refreshing the listings would help. Right. Mm -hmm. And so yesterday at 107, I had 37 views and two favorites, one shop view, one realtor listing view. And I renewed my monthly planner printable and color coding your perfect week early bird. So that cost me 40 cents. And then I sold two realtor. So I sold a realtor one, two realtor ones, and then I sold a color coding one. So I made, I spent 40 cents and I made $9. Wow. And this is with the Etsy promoted listings? No, that was with renewing my listing at oh, 107 oh, in the afternoon. Huh. So I don't know whether it just, so I don't have enough data. I'm a big data kind of kid. I yeah. really, really want to, like I document everything. I know that on Etsy on Tuesday, I had, you know, two to-do list notebook searches. I know how many, um, I know what keywords I rank for on Google because you can't rank on Google if you don't know what you're looking for. Right. Um, so I think that really looking at those things is super fun because you're like doing a little experiment. So if you've never made a sale and you're not posting any more new products, why not spend 20 cents and see if your views go up from yesterday to today? Okay. Well, that makes sense. That, that would be super fun. So that's kind of what I'm doing within Etsy. Okay. Now I have, and I'm not going to tell you the number because I told you and you gasped, but I had a, num <laughs> I have a number of Twitter accounts, oh, yes. um, some of which are, are geared towards, um, so, so they're geared towards different things. My pterodactyl, which is like the, the, you know, flying dinosaur bird yeah which I've i thought had, was kind of cute it is cute i've had it for since 2007 or 2008 so i have like twenty thousand people on it and so anything i promote there does relatively well i just started a a twitter account for paperly people 10 weeks ago 11 weeks ago um and i have about 700 people on that and so that is uh a really good way to do it i don't do well um, on Facebook. I I just don't like it. I <laughs> I think it's so much work. It is for no. so little result. Um, I have Pinterest, so I track my views on my website, and so Pinterest sends quite a few um, hits to my website. I mean, relatively, like five a day. So when you're just starting. If you get five views on your website a day from Pinterest, be excited. Yeah. That is just awesome. And everything is going to grow. So if you, if you had interviewed me on day one and asked me how many Twitter people I had, I had zero. Right. That's where everybody starts. But within two months, two and a half months, I have 700 people that are only interested in time management, um, planners, 
uh, stickers, things like that, because I've been very deliberate to only follow people who do those things. And then what happens is people will follow you back. And I also use a tool called Crowdfire. Um, mm-hmm. It's a free website. And if if you go there while you're logged into your Twitter, it will let you delete people who are inactive. So I don't really delete too many people that are fo- that I'm following. But if they haven't posted in like three or six months, I just delete them. Okay. Now, so on Twitter, do you spend more time? Because 700 plus followers in two months is, I think it's significant. Um, I, I don't know what rate is average for growing um, your presence on Twitter. But do you spend more time growing your followership or promoting your products and what do you recommend? Okay. So I have I have a list of things that I do for Twitter. Okay. So every every morning I or most mornings do not make yourself unrealistic expectations. I don't do this every morning. I do this every morning that I have time. So I usually can post something of mine because I write a blog post almost every day because I'm a writer. You could take a picture of your product in process. You could do a screen capture of your website. You could, I mean, like there's a million ways to find something to post every single day. Mm -hmm. Then I have a list of people um, who I think are interesting and it has a naughty name, so I won't tell you, but it's IMFs. And So then I retweet two of their things. So now I'm not just posting my own stuff. I And you're on my paperly people, interesting people list Mm because I repost your stuff. Thank you. Um, Because you're in my, but you're, but you're somebody who is in the right sphere. So find some people that post awesome things and retweet their stuff. Mm -hmm. And then I favorite two or three things just from my feed. And then I um, follow when you start, you can only follow 25 people, and they're very sincere about that. Um, so I follow 25 people, and that's literally all I do. And I will tell you that takes less than 10 minutes. So do you have a step-by-step thing that you follow so you know to do, you know, well, you only start an account ever, you know, not not every day. But for new people, do you say, here's what you need to do to get the ball rolling? Which is exactly what you just said. Okay. Well, I have a little in Evernote. I just have a little form that I fill out that says posted, retweeted, favorited, followed, unfollowed. And so what I, what I do is, is I just, eventually I'll have a form on my paperly people Etsy store for this. Mm -hmm. Um, But every day I just do that. I mean, it's not rocket science. That's the thing about marketing is it's the it's the accumulation of a lot of little things. So right. it's really easy to follow 25 people a day. You just do a search in the top search bar for the exact search term that you want to find people in. Mm-hmm. And then you click on the accounts tab. And that way you can just go down and you just click follow, 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 follow. Don't follow people who look like spammers. Um but it's also easy not to do, right? So right, yeah. if it's super easy to do, it's super easy to skip. Okay. Now, now you get you said you get uh, traffic from Pinterest as well. What's mm-hmm. your Pinterest strategy? <sighs> Deep breath. To be real, <laughs> I was breathing. Um, I'm I'm sort of good at Pinterest because I'm a person rather than a marketer. Okay. Okay. So my strategy for Pinterest is to pin stuff I like. And I really like my writing. I feel like I'm an exceptional writer. (laughs) So I always pin my stuff. And then I will go and I will find other things that I like. And I tend to do it. So the one thing you don't want to do on Pinterest is pin 20 of your blog posts all at once or 20 of your pictures all at once because all you're doing is burning your your chance. Hmm. Um, so you want to do it a little bit at a time and then find, and they're, it's so weird, they're called shoulder things in marketing and I don't know why because I just find that really weird. But so I sell 
time management forms, which may not be the most sexy thing in the world. <laughs> I find it very sexy, but most people don't. Um, but they love those little stickers for business planners. So what I'll do is I will find really cute planner things and I'll post two or three or four of them and then I'll stick mine in the middle of that. And then two or three or four of them and I'll stick mine in the middle <laughs> of that. And as, as long as it's relatively close, I feel like, so So for those, I'll use stickers that business people would use, like a little briefcase yeah. or, uh, you know, so it's not like I have the water stickers and, hey, this is how you do SEO for your Etsy store. <laughs> They're, they're at least somewhat related. Um, mm -hmm. but, but Pinterest is really good. And I pay for some promotions on Pinterest on ads. Oh, how did that work um, for you? I actually adore it. Um, I'm paying between five and 17 cents per click. Um, and the thing that I love about it is unlike Facebook and unlike Twitter, if you're paying, which I'm not paying for paperly for either one of those. Um, if, if somebody pins your pin and you stop paying for promotions, they don't suck those off their boards. They're just yeah. there forever. Oh, wait. So I've, I've never done the Pinterest promoted ads, but I know other people who I've talked to have done it. So Pinterest shows more of your pins to more people. So it increases their chance of getting repinned. Is that what you're paying for with the Pinterest ads? Yes, exactly. Okay. So I'll give you an example. One of my recent pins that I paid for was color coding your life, right? So that's a really mm -hmm. graphic pin. It's, um, it's a really good blog post. Like I sat here and colored my color coded life one color at a time and I documented it and it's really interesting it's not just hey buy my form it's it's a really cool blog post and you could literally do the same thing with any you know if you want to print out a piece of paper and draw on it you could do it so I promoted that one and um it got a really good repin rate so mm -hmm. I would say four percent three percent is really good um and so so now it's out there and what happens is that that everybody always says oh sharing on facebook you could go viral and i've seen a couple of things by real people go viral but what happens with most things is especially on pinterest is it just grows over time yeah. so somebody puts uh, their pin on your pin on their board and then somebody else sees it a little while later and then it's on two boards and then, you know, three people see it on the side and four people see, and it just grows that way. So for me, and I've spent very little money. I'm super cheap, like <laughs> really cheap. So I start at $2 a day for like two or three days just to let it get a little bit ahead of steam. And then I drop it down to like 50 cents. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that is cheap. But the good thing is right. that you can set you can set um how much you want to spend, which I like I like that idea. I love I, I do do um for my for my marketing business, I do do some uh promoted tweets and I will tell you I can attribute direct sales to Pinterest and I don't know that I can attribute direct sales to um Twitter. So if that's any and did you do the Twitter ads? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. The other thing I was going to ask you is Instagram. Are you on there and how are you, are you using that in any way to help promote? Yes, ish. <laughs> yes, ish. So, yeah, totally ish. So, um, my my real life, my marketing artfully life, Tara, Tara Jacobson, I've been on the internet for a very long time. And so I have a good number of Instagram people on Tara, um, Tara Jacobson. I think I have over a thousand. Um, that you mean on up. Instagram? On Instagram. Okay. For, for, for my, what I consider my real account. Oh, no, no. I only have 780. Um, so, so 
for me, Instagram is way more about, it's called non-converting media. Hmm. So converting media would be if I took a picture of my form and I was able to put a link to it and I said, buy my form and somebody saw that picture and bought my form, right? That's how marketing works. What my Instagram accounts have are all kinds of things like pictures of, oh my gosh, I took the coolest picture at an antique store of this tree with sticky things out. That's not going to sell any forms, Mm -hmm. but what it's going to do is to make people like me more and maybe check out my stuff and do all that. I am getting ready to do a contest to give away some happy planners. Um, And I think Instagram works really well for that. Um, But just day to day, I, 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 I sell forms. People aren't, <laughs> aren't going to see a piece of paper and go, I got to have go, one of them. I've been waiting. <laughs> right? So cool. Yes. So Tara, you offer specialty services to Etsy sellers. Can you tell me or tell us more about what specifically you offer? So I have two things right now I'm offering. Um, one is a single product SEO deep dive. So you sell calligraphy, correct? No. What do you sell? <laughs> you see, calli- <laughs> it's funny. Yes, calligraphy. Is, I, I do do calligraphy. I just don't sell it on Etsy. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, let's use calligraphy because okay. <laughs> I've heard you talk about it. Yes. <laughs> so, So if you're going to sell calligraphy, it would be really, really good to know how to SEO for your top product. Yeah. And so for very little money, I will help like do a video walkthrough, show you exactly how I'm doing it. What's, you know, what the S, why the reasons why I'm recommending something, things like that. Okay. And then I have another product that's a little bit more expensive, still not very much, but that is, uh, for your niche. Okay. So if you're doing if you're doing calligraphy, then maybe you're doing, you know, business stationery or you're doing wedding invitations or you're doing something like that. Mm-hmm. In which case, you know, you would want to know more of those keywords. And that is something that that I really enjoy. Like I just love doing it. I find it so interesting. Um so I mess around, you know, I mess around with mine all day long. I'm like, oh, what is this keyword? And what if I do that? Because I have no life, obviously. <laughs> um, so those are the two services that I do. And then I also have, um, if you want to do it DIY, I also have um, two forms for Etsy sellers on my Paperly store. Let me not make a say it wrong. Um, I have one that uses a, a, a product that you recommended, or I guess you had the guys on the, on the, um, podcast. I love marmalade, love, love, love it. And so I have a, um, SEO worksheet for them that uses that exact tool. And then I also have a keyword brainstorming because I think a lot of times people, like they don't even know where to start. Like they know they have a personal note, but they don't know how to find all the other things that people would call it that. So there's two different forms. They both have videos that walk through um, and they're really good. Like my stuff is really good. Okay. So, so let's talk about, uh, about them a, a bit more. Let's start with the one we're on now. So the SEO worksheet for Etsy sellers does Someone who buys this worksheet and uses it also have to be subscribed to Marmalade. Yeah, it would help. Yeah, okay. I think you could physically do it without it, okay. but you could do it with the free Marmalade. Everything yes. except for check your own stuff. So the Marmalade is amazing. And that's who mm-hmm. I was writing the guest post for today. Oh, cool. um, yeah, there were a bunch of people that were saying that they, they thought that because the data that they get is from Etsy sellers that it wasn't valuable, um, Hmm. which I, I wrote a 1400 word rebuttal. (laughs) Um, but 
But basically, what that that worksheet is really cool. I use it in my own business. So all these things are mostly because I need something. But what you're doing is you're finding out the tags and the categories and the materials and your yeah. average price. And then you're actually going into your competitors' listings and checking and seeing what they have. So if if I'm making a form, say I decide, oh, I have the perfect one. So business planners, the ladies that make the business planners are very sincere about, like they have 40 pages and they have pine cones on them and porcupines and <laughs> like colors and then you can get it. I'm like, I don't want to make that form. That seems like a lot of work to me. So so one, when I was doing this and I was looking and I'm seeing that some of those ladies have 1,200 sales or 10,000 sales on their shop, right. that isn't who I'm going to compete with first. Mm -hmm. I'm going to find something else to call it because they're going to kick my butt. <laughs> they just have way more sales, way more percentage of favorites, just yeah. all those things. So, so doing that kind of research, anybody can do. Okay. okay. It's just collecting data. It's very exciting. You should try it. It's I, 350, I, girl. I, I know. I'm thinking, okay, I should. <laughs> okay. And so just, just as a reminder for everyone, Marmalade is an SEO tool. It helps you pull in um, keywords that, that you can use for tags for your, for your Etsy shop. And oh, one second. If you want to know... Oops, Sorry. If you want to know more about it, I'm I'm quickly trying to type in so I can get you the the podcast episode. Go to convome.com and listen to episode 93 or if you subscribe to the podcast, it's episode 93. They go into lots of detail about how how it all works. Um Yes, and and I'm actually I before I made a worksheet using their software randomly, I checked with them and so they have no they know that I have a worksheet up on Etsy and okay. they're happy about it. So Okay, good. Um yeah, so I I'm very respectful of other people and and that. Okay, good. And Richie and Gordon, they're they're nice guys. They're really super nice. Yeah. Okay, so then the other the other worksheet that you have for Etsy sellers is the Etsy SEO keyword brainstorming. Yes, that's for finding all different, going all different kinds of places like Google and, um, you know, keywords that you can use, all different kinds of tags, mm -hmm. um, synonyms and things like that. So it's a very structured way to negative keywords. So for me, like planner should be a negative keyword because it's not exactly right. It's not what I sell according to them. And so it's really super, super fun. It's fun to do to to really start to get these keywords. And then you're not as scared. Wait, let's talk about negative keywords. Because um, when you say negative keyword, that's a keyword that you don't want to be found for. But um, how do you use that in your listing? You don't. You it's don't. Oh, like, okay. So, so words to so, avoid. Yeah, negative keywords are actually specifically for... Um, Google paid search, you can say, oh, don't, don't include this, okay. but, but I think it's super exciting to find them because you only have 13 tags and only have that certain amount of, of space for your title. Mm -hmm. So if you're using a keyword, either one of those places, then you are wasting it. Yeah. Okay. So. Okay, I like that one too. And that one also is 350. My I other know, right? <laughs> it's working. <laughs> my question, my other question about the two worksheets that you have. So, if someone does it once for for one product, can can they use it again for multiple I guess if you're selling the same thing, you can repeat the keywords and and tags and titles well maybe not exactly but you can use it once if you sell many of the same types of things and Is that's that right? exactly right so okay. so i'll give you an example so i have um 
daily planner, right? So I don't necessarily have a business planner. The thing that's my business calendar is not a business planner. But I do have a daily planner, right? So I mm -hmm. did all that research for it. And I found out that the top category for it is paper goods calendar. Well, that isn't going to change. I don't have to reinvent the wheel every time that I'm doing something that kind of is related to planner. Then I would just go back and try to really hone in on the daily part. What do you mean hone in on the daily part? Okay, so now I know that I know all kinds of things because I did planner, like business planner. Mm -hmm. So now I know that planner printable is a thing oh, and okay. printable schedule is a thing oh. and day organizer is a thing. So now I have all of these words uh -huh. that people use. Yeah. And I will tell you, it's hysterical to me because I rank on the first page of Etsy for lots of things because I'm used to, to fighting against millions of competing things. Yeah. And now I'm fighting against Sometimes hundreds, sometimes thousands. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. That's smart. Then for the services that you offer to Etsy sellers, is it basically the two, the two products that you sell on Etsy, but on steroids, which would mean right, you would be doing it. Exactly. Okay. So then instead of, Instead of them trying to figure it out, then I'm going to do it yeah. and and not just do it, but like have you over my shoulder while I'm doing it. Okay. And so you can learn a whole bunch of stuff about your product itself. And one of the things that, that I find funny is people keep selling these store reviews and to where they're going to tell you what's wrong with your store. If you read the Etsy seller's handbook, you know what's wrong with your store. If your pictures are bad, your pictures are bad. There's fix that. If your banner isn't very nice, go to Fiverr and get a new banner. If you don't have a policies, go copy the person who you, who's your competitor, right? Like, don't do that exactly, please. But, but you get the idea. These aren't things that you have to learn about yeah. to be able to sell. They're just things. Um, so this is more to be able to help you sell. I think one of the frustrations, and I saw it on the Etsy Conversations um, Facebook page, was they were really, really upset that they had done SEO and now their sites are moving, you know, their, their products are moving up in the ranks, but they're not selling anymore. And, and I think that that has a lot to do with you know, your description and what you're selling and is it priced right? That doesn't have anything to do with SEO. SEO will help your products be seen, not to help sell them. Wow. Thanks, Tara. See, I told you, you would be so excited. <laughs> I know, I know. I'm like, okay, as I, as I was coming up with questions, you were answering them already. I'm like, oh, okay, she just responded to that question. And then you say something, I'm like, oh, okay, she just responded to that question. <laughs> so thank you for doing my work for me. Yay. Okay, so more than just a store critique, because usually the store critiques say, here's everything that's wrong, fix it. You are saying here's what you need to be doing correctly. Exactly. Okay. Now the video walkthrough, you said over, over, um, over your shoulder, is that, do you make, um, do you schedule an actual session with the Etsy business owner or do you create a video and then send it via email for that person to watch? I create a video. I'm, I'm pretty easy. If somebody you know, I have a certain amount of time that I'm really scheduling for it. A single okay. product be about a half an hour. Okay. A niche is going to be somewhere between an hour, an hour and a half. Okay. And um, so if somebody said, hey, you know, I'm really interested in learning how to do this and I want to know what to do. Yeah. We could just at, we could just Skype. I mean, that's not that's not hard. Okay. All right. And if you want to get more information about these two services. They're on Tara's website, marketingartfully.com. It's pretty easy to find. Just go to work with me. And then there's a tab for SEO for Etsy sellers and you'll see them both. And on that page, 
um, you can get pricing information and more detailed information. Well, I don't, I don't think it gets more detailed than Tara explaining it herself, but you can <laughs> read uh, uh, again what, what you get with those two services that, um, that she offers. I might be calling you after this. Yay! <laughs> have fun! All right. What are your favorite marketing tools or other resources that you're using now that you would like to share? Okay. So I love the marmalade yeah, because okay. that's my thing. <laughs> and then you had another lady that talked about treasury box. Yes. That is very exciting because I like to put things in little categories. So I go and I, I put all the things like today I have to buy some soap. So I'm going to use my paperly account. I'm going to put all the little soaps that I'm considering in the treasury. And then you just hit one, you write a little message one time and you send it out to all of them. So that's brilliant. Yeah. You should do that. And then I think that, that a lot of times people are, um, oh shoot, what's the word? That, that they're scared of using Photoshop or one of those big programs. Mm -hmm. um, I love Canva, C-A-N-B-A, yes. which is a free tool that you can use for um, doing your doing your marketing banners and things like that. Uh -huh. Okay. Sorry, I'm writing these down so I can put links to them in the in the um, blog post so folks can go back and find these resources. So that was Marmalade, Canva, and the Treasury Box. Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right. And, okay, so this is, I feel like there's more I want to ask you, but then I'm like, okay, we're way over an hour. Sometimes I get <laughs> afraid I'll annoy people when we talk for too long. <laughs> but before I let you go, so let's do an Etsy shop shout out. Who, what other Etsy seller or Etsy shop would you like to give a shout out to? Okay, so this is ridiculous. No. I have, I have a thing for small cats oh, stuck on the paper clips. <laughs> so I shop for those at created by Danielle the number 1. She has the nicest small cats on paper clips. Oh. Now They're really cute. How did you even know to look for that? Um I think that that and this is where SEO probably does come into it. I was looking for like planner, planner extras, planner goodies, something like that. And, and so I saw one. And then once I saw the cat on the paperclip, I was in love. <laughs> um, but I think that that's why it's so important to do your research and find out what people are searching for. Because obviously you have never done a search for planner goodies. Um, yeah. but, but those are really easy things. It's, it's more so finding out the vernacular of what people are using to search than to try to reinvent the wheel. Right. It's so funny. I see people make up words like, like emojo is what I'm calling this. Well, nobody's <laughs> looking for it. So just call it what it is. <laughs> that makes, that makes perfect sense. And I just pulled up Danielle's shop and I would have never found it if you didn't just say that because right? I, would, I wouldn't have known what to even look for but that makes perfect sense use keywords that people are shopping for she does have cute paper clips <laughs> see now you're gonna have to have a paper clip I aren't know. you oh yeah okay tara what's one last piece of advice that you want to share with with us um, so for me, I think if you can learn how to, right now for a lot of people, SEO and understanding how to make their shop show up in search seems overwhelming and, and not possible. But what happens is as you learn that skill, it becomes really easy. I don't, you know, yes, it'll take a half an hour to do research for somebody else from scratch, but on my stuff, it may take me five or 10 minutes and, mm -hmm. and the fact that it takes five or 10 minutes to do something that will increase your sales that exponentially is just like, why wouldn't you do that? Okay. That makes sense. All right. 
Okay, Tara doesn't know I'm going to do this. So if she says no, you will never hear this. I will edit it out. <laughs> so I'm going to take you up on on your Etsy SEO market research. And Yay! would you be willing to do a before and after so that I can say, okay, before we started, this is where I was. And then after, this is where I am. Oh my gosh, how fun would that be? And then we could record it all and we could see where it was. And I think so. And I we, we didn't talk about this before, so I'm completely catching her off guard. But I think <laughs> no, but it would, that be good. would be good. That would be really fun to do, especially because then your people could see kind of the progression. And, you know, mm -hmm. I understand that a lot of Etsy sellers cannot afford to do that. Yeah. And so I don't mind when when we do something and other people get to see things and they couldn't necessarily do it themselves. But that's then exactly once they right. learn how to do it, then they're good. Yeah. And that's exactly why I was thinking, OK, this would be good to do. So then if we do a proof of concept, then people feel more comfortable saying, OK, all right, I get it. I see Right. It. Yeah. Okay, cool. So Tara will be back. <laughs> Yay. Tara, thank you so much for spending this time with me and for sharing all that you've shared. I've taken copious notes and um, I hope that you listening have learned a lot too. There are many ways you can get a hold of Tara. Go to convome.com and I don't yet know the title of this episode, but it will be on the website. I'll, I'll, you know what? I'll call it Tara Jacobson. You can find her on my website and I'll have all the links to Tara where you can reach out to Tara and feel free to get in contact with her if you have any questions about things that we didn't touch on during our conversation. But um, before I let her go, Tara, can you just tell us what's the best way to get in touch with you if someone wants to? I think that's better than me saying go to convome.com and look for Tara. Oh, just email Tara at marketingartfully.com. So it's marketing the pretty way, A-R-T-F-U-L-L-Y. Okay, perfect. Thank you. And then I'll have that in the blog post as well. Tara, thank you again for being my guest now and a future guest. And I, I've learned a lot from you. So I, I really appreciate you taking the time to speak with me today. Oh, you're so welcome. I was so excited to be asked on. <laughs> thank you. And I thank you for listening to the podcast. I will be back next week. Thank you for listening. You can subscribe to the podcast in iTunes. And while you're there, please leave a review too. visit convome.com to leave a comment or feedback on this episode.